In the, in the waters of baptism, Fintan died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Is it crossed the barren desert? You shall not die. You shall wander far and see. Though you do not know the way, you shall speak your words to foreign lands, and they will understand. You shall see the outside in such big numbers have come to pray for Fintan this morning. I bid you all welcome and in particular one of Fintan's great friends here, Father Oliver, who has come up from Westmead to join us today for offering this Holy Mass to Fintan, for Fintan this morning. You're all very welcome. The first thing we do when we bring a loved one into the church is to place the Christian symbols over their mortal remains. The Book of the Gospels and the Cross. In Finton, life was, for him, he was Christian. In life, when he was baptized, he received the sign of the Cross. As we place the Cross over his mortal remains this morning, we pray that he will share in the victory that Jesus has over sin and death. We place the Book of the Gospels over him. When he listened to the Scriptures, when he heard God's Word here at Mass or at home, he heard the words of Jesus. We pray that he'll hear those special words of Christ today. Come, blessed of my Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Let us 
I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, for my fault, for my fault, for my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son who died on the cross was raised up again from the dead. He is the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant through this mystery your servant, Vincent, who has gone to his rest in the peace of Christ, we now share in the joy of his resurrection. This prayer we ask for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. I invite you to be seated as we listen to God's word proclaimed for us this morning by Paul and Sam. I invite Paul and Sam to come and join us in the sanctuary here. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going, they are going look like a disaster. They are leaving us like annihilation. But they are in peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Life was their affliction, great will their blessing be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. They who trusted in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy await those he has chosen. The word of the Lord. Lord, to my shepherd, not one, he makes me down to lie in pastures green. He leaded me the quiet wall. My soul. letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with the word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, 
who are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord, alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. <clears throat> Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world, the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for a few moments. Brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, in every parish throughout the country, in, in ordinary time anyway, there's a day in the year called Cemetery Sunday. Before this pandemic, both last year and this year, many far and near would be booking train tickets, plane tickets, and even boat tickets to bring their cars back home to their home parish, particularly here in Belive and Kildaki to be with our family for Cemetery Sunday. The graves would be tidied, flowers would be cut and bought and planted. I remember when I was in trim with Father Andy Farrell, he would be praying for weeks that Mead wouldn't be clashing on that day with Dublin or some other big team that would take from the crowds that would be turning up for cemetery devotions on that Sunday evening. The people of Mead, as you very well know, are very much torn between the God of football and the God of the church. Along with the month of November, it's one of those days in the year that we take time and we put aside a day or more to be praying for those who've gone before us. It's a day, if you like, when we take a little more seriously the words written in the Old Testament, in the book of Maccabees, where it is written therein, it is therefore a holy and a wholesome thought to pray for the dead, that they may be loosened from their sins. That gospel that Father Oliver read for us this morning speaks about Lazarus, Martha and Mary. They were the friends of Jesus, good companions. And Lazarus had been sick, but Jesus delayed in coming. When Jesus eventually got there, Martha and Mary, the sisters of Lazarus, had questions. I'm sure he wanted to ask Jesus, where were you? You're our friend. You were going around healing and curing illnesses of every sort. Could you not be here for our brother? He had previously stayed at their home, as we read in John's Gospel. There he ate and he drank with the sisters and with Lazarus, no doubt. 
He taught the people in their house, sitting around at his feet, as the master taught. He had dinner with them. He stayed over. Obviously, the friends of Jesus had questions. Lord, where were you? But Jesus didn't answer any of their questions. At least we're not told anyway. What we are told is that he led them more deeply into an understanding of what eternal life is about. And so we have gathered here this morning to ponder and wonder about where Clinton has gone. Not so much to talk about him, but to pray for him. We believe that our prayers, and we're told that in scripture, scripture can help those who have gone before us. The prayers we offer on Cemetery Sunday and in the month of November help speedy those who have gone before us home. Our prayers help forgive their sins, that they may enjoy God's peace. When we lay flowers or a wreath in someone's honor on their grave, these flowers wither and fade and are eventually thrown in the compost heap. But the prayer we offer, the Mass we offer, that, that never fades. It has lasting value. The Mass that we offer for Clinton this morning is the most important prayer that we can offer for him. When we come to the Mass, we come to Calvary, to Christ who suffered for us, who suffered for Finton. We come to Christ with the simple prayer, Lord have mercy. And all of us here this morning have come to pray and pay our respects for Finton and his family. We offer prayer this morning for you, Moraine, Karen, John, Fiona and Anne. I witness Finton attending Mass here in our beautiful church, with you, Mairead, sitting down there underneath the beautiful stained glass window of St. Columbanus. There on a Sunday morning when he could come here, you would pray together. And when he couldn't come here, I would visit him in his home, with Holy Communion. Indeed, for the first time I brought him Holy Communion and anointed him in St. Vincent's Hospital a few years ago. I witnessed great joy. On those occasions, the joy that came into his eyes, and indeed the tears, were a confession to me of someone who deep down loved the Lord. Confession and Holy Communion, friends, brings great joy to people. And I would say to anybody who's caring for the sick, ask them, would they like to receive the Lord? Because let me tell you, the joy that sinks in gives great consolation to those who are sick. Clinton often said, and I smile at this because so many others will know the phrase that he uses so well, instead of saying amen at the end of prayers, he'd often say, right, okay. And I heard that so many times from Clinton, right, okay. I had many conversations with Clinton here over the years, and Father Oliver, I'm sure, can testify to the same, when maybe we wanted a few small jobs done. He'd say, right, okay. The Christmas crib outside was one such job. Plastering and painting in the sacristy. He wouldn't do it himself, but he'd get somebody to do it telling me, don't worry about it, right, okay? It'll be done. And as family and friends, you too have your right, okay story to tell this morning. Paul will recall stories of a rather boisterous Finton who, in the eight-mile round trip to Raherney, would rather cycle through cow padded fields and forest rather than use the road. The bicycle, as a result, would be more times off the road than on it, so to speak. The times you'll tell also of filling your school bag with apples. I hope they were paid for. Finton always wanted to work and put his shoulder to the wheel. He was a doer rather than a contemplator. Determined from a young age, to progress, an aspiration, dear friends, well worth following for any young man or woman. He was not long in Birmingham, UK, when he advanced from workman to foreman, from subcontractor to contractor, building bridges and roads. A marriage is a bridge, Maraid. In marrying you and shortly after meeting in 68, you two have become from couple to wife and husband to family. 
and in rearing your children both there in Birmingham and here in Beliver, you became that family. And the people of Beliver want to say thank you this morning. Thank you for sharing Clinton with us. Clinton became around here somewhat of a St. Anthony, if you like. You see, when people can't get something or find something, they pray. They come in here and they light a candle to St. Anthony. And St. Anthony very often comes up with the goods. And so Finton too, akin to St. Anthony, was able to source things for people who were looking for them. It might be more bigger than what St. Anthony was providing as far as machinery and tools and vehicles. Finton, I suppose, was a jack of all trades. Even on one occasion, he secured a set of Scottish bagpipes for Father Sean McGarty in Australia. The rumour around here has it, Mairead, that he wanted to go and deliver to them to him personally, but he wasn't let. Friends, I'm sure that with these stories and with many others, we come to this sacred space where we present Clinton before the Lord. We come here, friends, to pray our goodbyes. We come here to thank God, to thank God for putting Clinton in our lives and for affording each one of us the grace of knowing him and the grace to be able to pray for him this morning. We constantly place, place him in the hands of God with our prayers. And so in this Holy Mass here that we are offering for Clinton, we do two things. As I say, we're praying for Clinton. That any sins that may have been left unconfessed may now by God's loving mercy be forgiven. And we come also to take something away. A reminder of the promise of Christ that whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will live forever. May Clinton, who was nourished by the Eucharist, come now to the banquet of life that Christ has prepared for those who are faithful. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, to the mercy of God, rest in peace. Friends, I invite you to stand now for our prayers of the faithful, and we will be led in prayer by Richard. Gathered as God's family, as friends in faith, we make our prayers. May Finton have eternal rest. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who have died also, especially Finton's brother Seamus and his mother and father. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who cared for Finton during his illness, especially the excellent palliative care workers, the dedicated home health and carers, and recently all the wonderful staff in St. Camilla's nursing home. Thank you all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all of Finton's family. May God grant them strength at this difficult time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We now pray for a moment silently for all our own intentions. Lord, graciously hear us. Turning now in this month of May to Mary, the mother of Jesus, who stood by the cross as her son was dying, we ask her to make up what we often ourselves lack in prayer. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Lord, support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes. The busy world is hushed, and the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant to us, your children, a safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at last. We make all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Be seated for our offering. If the bread we Fruits of labor, fruits of love, take and offer, sanctify, bless and grow, words of 
My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Finton, we beseech your mercy that he, who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior, may find him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from death. 
celebrate memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you have willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your son, may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, who blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Columbanus and Dimple and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. On his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim, church, and earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Tom, our Bishop, Michael, our Tire Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, St. and Doyle, whom you have called in this world to yourself, and that he who is united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, and from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died, and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his glorious body, to our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you as our passions in this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, where we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, and you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we should be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, as we bestow on the world all that is good. To him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the same command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, but that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
for those of you who are watching in online, uh, and for those of you who do not wish this morning to receive Holy Communion sacramentally, we offer the following prayer as an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let perpetual light shine upon them with all your saints forever, for you are merciful, O Lord. For the distribution of Holy Communion, those of you who wish to receive in the church here, Holy Communion will be brought to you in your seats. If you are blocking somebody in uh, toward the wall, would you step out first and back and allow the people on the inside to receive Holy Communion before you and then receive yourself and return to your seats. Those of you who are outside the church, Holy Communion will be brought just outside the doors. If you would socially distance yourself and receive Holy Communion respectfully outside. Mm -hmm. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come thou, be filled and bound with reverence and fear. In Him who sin is found, we stand on holy ground. Be still for the presence the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord. He's shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. Here I stand with John the teacher, 
sacrament most holy O sacrament divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine O sacrament most holy O sacrament divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine O sacrament most holy O sacrament divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine let us pray Lord God, your Son Jesus Christ gave us the sacrament of his body and blood to guide us in our pilgrimage to your kingdom. May our brother Finton, who shared in the Eucharist, come to the banquet of life that Christ has prepared for us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf of Father Oliver and I, Rage, Karen, John, Fiona and Anne, be short of our prayers this time of Clinton's death, and we accompany you very much in our hearts. A special thanks to all of you who participated in the liturgy, and a particular thanks to all who are gathered outside their testimony to a man, and I'm sure he'd want me to say to you, all of you uh, this morning, right, okay. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for our final prayers and commendation. Brothers and sisters, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of Finton, our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. I now invite Father Oliver to sprinkle Vincent's mortal remains with holy water and incense them, a reminder to us of our baptism in Christ, at which we are afforded the opportunity to meet again in heaven. Baptism is the gateway to heaven. And we incense Vincent's mortal remains, a reminder that our body is sacred. It is the temple of the Holy Spirit.
receive his soul and present them to God the Most High. Saints of God come to his aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you and then take you to himself. May angels lead you to the presence of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul, present him to God the most high. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Finton in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him again on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings you bestowed upon Finton in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain, to comfort one another with assurances of our faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother forever through Christ our Lord. Benton, may the angels lead you to paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, may have eternal rest. In peace now, brothers and sisters, let us take Finton to his place of rest. <laughs> Yeah. 